So I had this patient many years ago, <clears throat> and she'd always come in, <clears throat> what I would perceive as to be a, a bad attitude, shall we say. Uh, I would call her name. She wouldn't even acknowledge that I called her name. She would just stand up. And I would say, hey, how are you? Uh, come on in, you know, to the room. And she wouldn't acknowledge that at all. Um, never wanted to get her weight done, you know. Uh, was not interested in that at all. Never had an interest in any kind of conversation. So I sit her down and I would say, so what are you here for today? And she would tell me the usual. And the usual was she had stomach issues for years and years, you know. And so I'd always try to do some kind of small talk, get some kind of, you know, familiarity going, some kind of common ground, you know, because as medical assistants, you, you know, there has to be a sense of caring for the patient. And uh, when I was an MA, that was very important to me that my patients knew I really gave a darn about them, you know. But she'd always come off so negative and just like a cloud over her. And it was just, it was hard at first because I was still kind of new to the MA field. And I'm a very, uh, normally I'm a very upbeat type person, right? But dealing with her is like, man, you know. So it got to the point where after three or four times, I see her name on, on the patient visits that day. I'd be like, oh, here we go again, you know. And I started having this very negative attitude towards her too. I try to mask it, of course, but it's like, oh, here she is again, right? And bad attitude, uh, didn't like to even talk to me or the doctor either. Just seemed to not be the most approachable person ever, you know? And then one day, uh, the day before the day before she came in, I got charts ready, you know, looked at my um, online uh, Epic and see what's going on there. And I looked at her history and what I found was that uh, a year and a half before she started coming to the clinic, she had a family. She had a husband. She had two two children, two girls. And in the in the charts, from what I can understand, was that there was an MVA motor vehicle accident, very severe apparently. Uh, they were hit by an el elderly driver, and the driver killed her two kids and her husband. A year after that, she started coming to the clinic for stomach problems. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is because we're going to deal with negative patients. We're going to deal with patients who are just don't like talking to us, seem that they don't like us at all, you know, seem like they don't even want to be there at the clinic to deal with us, you know. And when I learned about her history, she never changed her same attitude, her same everything, right? But it helped me much more to be much more understanding. And here comes the E word, empathetic to people, right? Because as you go through your medical assistant job every day, you have to always have the realization that you're dealing with people who are not in their best of physical health or even mental health, right? A lot of these folks are coming to you injured. They're coming to you depressed. They're coming to you not feeling well. They're coming to you upset, angry, hurt. They're coming to you with many things that you don't even have an idea about if you can't see it. Yes, you can see a broken leg, but you can't always see a broken heart, right? A heart that's given up. A heart that's almost dead, right? Those are hard to see. It's not like when you go to Disneyland, customers at Disneyland, for the most part, are happy to be there. They're the easiest to deal with because they're all happy. Hee hee, you want candy and ride on rides, whatever. It's easy. As a customer uh, service person at Disneyland, it'd be a much easier job than being a medical assistant because you already deal with the person who's already got a high euphoric understanding of Disneyland. They, they, they want to be there, right? They want to enjoy themselves. But when you have patients as a medical assistant, you're dealing with the exact opposite almost, right? So you have to realize that these people you're dealing with, they're not going to be, many of them will not be on their best behavior. They're not going to want to talk to you. And sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's not. But you have to realize the first thing is that you're dealing with people who are already injured. Another thing too is a P word, I say psychology. You have to get the psychology in your mind, Is the psychology you wanna have in your mind is this. What would it be like to walk in their shoes, right? 
that's important. So before we hate on somebody like I did years ago because I didn't understand the psychology or the realization of people and their pain, I was taking it all personal, which you can't do. You know, we're human, I get that. Sometimes things will become personal. When patients say bad things to you, they yell at you, they yell the whole world, they're mad about some situation, whatever. You have to go back to the psychology of it all. What would it be like to be in their shoes? Think of the female patient I had years ago to have lost your family and your husband in one accident, gone. And then you, the next day you wake up to an empty house, right? The bedrooms where your kids are at, or those are empty now. The person sleeping next to you is gone now. Your bills are probably piled up. You, you probably lost your house. You're probably gonna lose your car, right? And then you're supposed to go to work after all this loss. And then you go to the clinic and the medical assistant say, hello, how are you? How's it going? I think a cheery face probably isn't the first thing you want to see after going through that much depression, that much loss, that much hurt, that much pain. So you guys, as medical assistants, you have to psychologically put yourself in that patient's shoes. Understand? Okay, before we go on, though, I want to wish you guys a... Merry Christmas Eve, you know, I, I'm shooting here today from the gym in my apartment complex because no one ever comes to the gym except me. So it's like my personal gym, really. <laughs> if you like the video, please hit like, of course, and please always subscribe. This helps to grow this channel with the number three uh, MA focused uh, YouTube channel out there. I'm here to help you guys with all your situations as medical assistants. Uh, please always, always, always let me know how you feel in your comments down below. And also, please let me know if you have anything personal to talk about. Hit me on email, jobwhitesjones at gmail.com. All right. Okay, let's get back into it. All right. So, again, you guys, you got to use psychology. You know, think about the patient, but also think about maybe what's been going on with their lives. It just, you know, even the patients who have the same pain for the past two months, right, are ringing in their ears or, or, strain, or a sprained ankle, whatever. When they become irritable or, or, or mad or angry, you know, as long as they're not violent to you, not cursing you out or making it like racial stuff or sexist stuff, you know, that's their state of mind because they're very, in a very altered state of mind. They're not the normal person. So use the psychology for that. Another word I'm going to use today, another T, the T word, thick skin. You got to have thick skin as a medical assistant. You just have to. You cannot make everything personal. I know we're in the age of counseling people and, 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 and calling people out and so on and so forth. Look, if it's a patient in pain, having a hard time, they're not being racist, they're not being sexist, they're just upset, their voices are raised, they're not feeling good, let that be. You know, in fact, go beyond that. Listen to them. You know, listen to what they say to you. Listen to what they're saying because even in anger and rage and fit, even in lies, there's a grain of truth in there, right? They might be saying, ah, this stupid blah, 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 leg hurts in my right ankle area. This dumb blah, 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 blah in my right ankle area. You know, you hear the same thing, right? You hear a lot of bogus, blah, 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 but you hear that the, the point is the right ankle area. So you're listening and even you can get that from them, right? You know that besides all the curse words they're using about their leg, the injuries in the right ankle. So you got to have a thick skin as a medical assistant. You cannot enter this field and uh, think you're going to be an MA who's just always cheery and happy you know, some of these videos you see online about medical assistants, you can think it's all about the cute hair and, and the eyebrows and the nails. It's, it's got nothing to do with that. The medical assistant is a profession, right? It's a profession. The reason why you know that is because it can be a certified profession. That means it goes beyond the looks and all that kind of stuff. It means you are a professional there to help out the patient, you're there for the patient. Whether the patient's having a good day or a bad day, 
you're still there for the patient. And that means you gotta have thick skin because patients don't care about your nails, your hair, your skin products. They don't care about that at all. They're not there for you. You're there for them, okay? I tell you guys all the time about my channel. I give you the real deal. I don't use any fluff. Um, I'm not an MA, so I cannot give you the day in the life of an MA, although there are some fun videos I see like that, the day in the life of an MA, that's very cool. I'm not, I'm not any of that. I'm not, I'm not the pretty side of medical assisting. I'm the, I'm the ugly side, okay? <laughs> that's the truth, you know? I'm giving you the real deal, you know? Because I will do you no favors if I give you this only glamorous side of being a medical assistant. Yes, medical assisting is awesome. That's how I started my whole career. It's awesome. But there's also reality you need to hear about being a medical assistant. And this is what I give you, okay? So when patients are upset, what they really want, like anybody who's upset, is just to be heard. Think about the last time you were mad at, say, your partner or whatever, right? And they weren't listening to you, right? They kept trying to talk over you, solve the problem, fix it before you got to say what you wanted to say. How does that make you feel? Probably more enraged. Same things with patients. When patients are getting enraged and they're not hurting anybody, they're not being overly racist, sexist, whatever, they're just expressing hurt and anger. Your job is to close your mouth and show your eyes to be empathetic, your body posture, hands crossed, because you're listening. You're not taking anything personal. You're using your thick skin. You're using your psychology. If that was me, how would I feel? Those are your weapons of war as a medical assistant. You're listening to your patient so they understand that you give a darn about them. And then you go from there. Because difficult patients are gonna come across your clinic at least once or twice a day. You know, you're gonna have it. If you approach these people with patience and understanding, do not take anything personal. Use the P word, psychology. Try to understand where they're coming from. And then you want to use the E word, empathy. Be empathetic to these patients. You're going to have a much easier time in dealing with rude or upset patients. Now, sometimes some people are just rude. You can't stop that. Some people are just rude. But I've learned in my seven years when I was a medical assistant that that was the best defense I had to understand people. I didn't learn this in school. MA school doesn't te didn't teach me that then and I doubt they teach you that now. These are things you're gonna learn from me. So with dealing with rude patients, impatient patients, <laughs> aggravated patients, right? <laughs> Be empathetic to them. Understand where they're coming from because when you're upset or you're hurt, you want someone to be empathetic to you, right? Of course. P word psychology. Try to understand where they're coming from. Try to understand their pain, their loss. Like the patient I had years ago, she lost two daughters and her husband, okay? That's huge. R word, realization. Realize what you're there for. You're not there to look cute for anybody. You're not there to talk about your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, you are there to deal with them. Realize that you're not working in Disneyland because, and by that, I don't mean an insult. I mean, you're not at Disneyland because the people who come see, who see you probably don't want to be there in the first place, right? I would rather be at Disneyland than coming to see you to take my vitals and tell you why I don't feel good, right? Because when you don't feel good, it's a hard deal. So that's the realization. Understand that. Last, you know, if you guys can, you know, try to get the patient's history, you know, as far as what they've dealt with, you know. Now, you got to be careful, of course, if you're a patient's charge, you got to be cool with that. Can't, you know, there's HIPAA, of course. But all I'm saying is this, is that the more you understand your patient, no matter, you know, the more you understand your patient, the better your relationship will be with that patient. And I've seen this so many times that, about 60% of the time, when I dealt with patients who are upset, mad or whatever, when I use the realization, the psychology that I use, the empathy that I use, in time, those became excellent professional relationships because I understood them better and they felt safe to tell me things because I listened to them, I gave some empathy, 
I just did the psychology and I realized I wasn't in Disneyland. I was there to help them, okay? So you guys, I hope all of you who are out there dealing with difficult patients understand these words of wisdom I'm giving you. These are tried and true methods I've used as an MA and I use it now as a hospital administrator as well. I use it all the time. I empathize with my, with my people all the time because I care about them, I really do. You can't fake caring for somebody. I care for my folks, you know? And then I always try to be empathetic to them and realize where I'm at with them, you know? It's so important. And the psychology behind it, where are they coming from? Some of my employees have had the hardest lives ever, but they still come to work every day and they give it their all, right? It's up to me to understand that and to support them. Just like it's up to you as a medical assistant to understand your patient's situation and to support that, all right? You guys, <clears throat> those are my words of wisdom. I'm not a know-all at all. I'm just trying to tell you guys what works for me. You won't find my content anywhere ever, anywhere online, because this comes from my experience. And I'm just trying to pass it on to you to make you guys more successful in your careers. This is how to deal with a difficult patient. And I want you guys to be successful, all right? Okay, you guys, you take care. Have an excellent Christmas Eve and an excellent Christmas. Now I gotta get my fat behind on the gym here on the treadmill because I'm trying to lose weight. So you guys take care. Bye.